Good afternoon. Today's date is July 1st, 2023. We are here with a young gentleman here. He's going to talk. He was a tank repairman. Uh, tell me your first, last name, date of birth, and when you served in the services and where you're from. My name's Harold Gene Burns. Harold G. Burns, B Y R N E S. B U R N S. Harold G. Burns, B U R N S. And when were you born? December 25th, 1944, Evansville, Indiana. So he was a World War II baby. He was right before the baby boomers. You're a World War II baby in 44, December 21st of 44. 25th, Christmas. 25th. So Battle of the Bulge and World War II started on December 17th of 44. So you're seven days before the battle, after the Battle of the Bulge. So uh, your age right now, then you're about 79. 78. 78, okay. Now tell us what years you served Mr. Burns in the service. 1965 to 1967. Okay, two years and you were you got an army hat there so you're an army guy and you work with tanks as well, is that right? That's right. Did you go training at Fort Knox? Yes I did. We have two tanks in front of you, we'll talk about them in a minute, but you Trained in the tanks. That's where a lot of people from Evansville area went over and trained in the tanks in uh, for Vietnam. Yeah. Did you go to Vietnam? Okay, you uh, then trained for say six months at Fort Knox uh, boot camp. Where was your boot camp? And then where did you? When did you tell us about boot camp? Where and then where did you go? Boot camp and AIT was at Fort Knox. Fort Knox. Okay. Did you sign up here in Evansville or up in Indianapolis or in Louisville? Here in Evansville, where they drafted me. In the post office where you signed up, or did you at the west side at the Navy uh, Reserve Center? I don't know where they signed me up at. All I know, the man come and told me, you're going to be in the Army. And what was your draft number? Do you remember? I sure. Oh, 314-46-2002. That's your number. Do you remember what your number was in the draft, like 1 to 365? Oh, don't no, remember. I sure don't. But he said you were, you were in. Do you go to Wright's High School? No, I went to Central. Central. Where did you go to grade school? Harwood. Harwood, okay, yeah. All right, so then tell us when you got in the Army, tell us a little bit about the experience. Well, I didn't have no experience working on tanks, but they trained us, and then whenever I got to my regular station, then I started working on tanks. Uh huh. So you worked on tanks. You didn't even train at Fort Knox on tanks, or did you? Yes. You did? Yes. They trained you there. And you trained, worked on the engine, or worked on the turret, or worked on the... All of it. Every bit of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and how, see, so in the service two years, did you go overseas or not? Yes. I spent a year, 11 months, and 14 days in Germany. In Germany. Yes. Now, tanks are pretty big in Germany, and the Russians had a bunch of bigger tanks on the other side of the border. Did you ever see the Russians and their tanks? Yeah, I was on Border Patrol. Uh -huh. So they were right there next to you, weren't they? Just about. Well, you could see them being there. And they were bigger than your tanks? Yeah, they were, but we was waving at each other and got along great. Yeah. So would you practice over there when you were over in Germany at all with the tanks? Yes. What did you, what was a practice like? Tell us what practice on a tank was. Oh, well, we, uh, we, we drove on a field, and it was a, a great big place there. Matter of fact, it's a place there where they made movies back whenever Holly Murphy was in, in the service. Wow. And the reason why I'm having trouble talking is because they cut some of my lung out. Recently, because of cancer, yeah. Yes. yeah. So they was a place where you trained about as big as a football field, or about oh, three times. Three times, and then you do it circles, and would you shoot the guns or not? Yeah, well, you would shoot the guns, you would go back, and then another outfit come up, shot the guns, and they started a lot of fires. You have a target with the gun. You had that oh, hit a yeah. target. Yeah, and did it? And it was 75 millimeter or 88 millimeter gun? No, it was a 50 caliber, 1.72, and a 105. A 105. So on our Sherman here, we're going to go out and look at a Sherman 
has an eight a 75 so 105 is about 30 millimeters bigger so it's a big gun that came out of there big and then they the, the type of bullets they use they had trajectories they had fire ones and what what type of bullets did you send out in the 105s well we had uh let me think see if i can get it get it right because it's been over 30 years since i, I got out and uh, it uh, it was uh, uh, some of them were bullets that penetrated another tank oh and, yeah and they were real just a oh, whole bullet then yeah. some of them would cause a fire they would be that like, big and it'd go through any tank like this yes. and then by the time it would get to a tank, it would be like that. Wow. Huh. It, it just break apart. I see, like shrapnel. Yeah, huh. and then it would come right through. Right through the tank. Now, how thick was your tank? Four inches of steel or a little bigger than that? Oh, it was bigger than that. Big engine on it too, diesel or regular gas? Diesel. Diesel and V12 Cadillac. Two V12s or one V12? One V12 Cadillac. And the transmission in the front, did the front wheel drive or back wheel drive? It was a... Uh, Track drive. It was back wheel. Back wheel drive. Uh -huh. Pull from the... Pull from the front? Th yeah. This front here. Yeah. Okay. And back here was the big motor and transmission. Turn that to the side. Turn that... Tank to the side. So the big motor's in the back. That was safer right there. Yes. And then five people in the tank, but the motor, you fixed the motor too, wouldn't you? Yes. They were all, and most tanks, that's where the engine is in the back. And then where was the gas tank there? Point to where the gas tank was. Both sides, hold about 100 gallons. Uh, 500 gallons. 500 gallons? Yeah. And then that turret would go all the way around. Show that turret. I don't know if it goes all the way around, but it'd do a circle, wouldn't it? Yeah. Turret. All the way around. That might not do it on that one. Yes, and then you had one guy in the turret or two guys up in the turret. One guy in the turret. He was the the tank commander. Yes. And one guy in the drivers. Yes. One guy in uh, that fired this gun along the side of it. Yeah. And then one guy a loader. Loader the bullets. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when they you would get in, you climb in from the front, wouldn't you? Uh, sometimes it all depends on where this thing was. I see where the turret was. But yeah. I would climb down through here, work my way down. Back here in the back, they had bars like that, about that big around. To to help you climb in and climb out. Yeah. yeah. And support it. So I would climb in the back and go into the driver's seat. Yes. And then you drove it too. Yes, I did. That clutch pretty hard on the left foot. Be honest with you, we didn't have a clutch. No clutch, I'm just no, automatic. No, no. Cadillac, Cadillac. How many CCs and how many horsepower was that? It's a V12 Cadillac. Uh huh. A V12, and I, I got pictures at home with me and another guy standing on top of that motor. It's that big. Wow. It covered the, this whole back end. It covered the whole back end. Yeah. No. Any questions for him? So in Korea, was the tank you worked Not on? Not Korea, he was in Vietnam. Vietnam, so five, Vietnam, six. you were in the M60 then, correct? Yes. Yep, the Patton. He, yes. he was in Vietnam. I was in Germany. Oh, in Germany. Ger so but in Germany, but the, the M60 Patton was a yeah. tank that was in during your time. Mm -hmm. and, that did that, and that one had the, the cupola on the top of the turret that had the machine gun mounted, correct? Right. 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 Yep. And, and a 50 millimeter on top. 50 caliber. 50 caliber, up, yeah. up there, and then... 7.62 was zeroed in with, with the big yep. So being in Germany during that time, how did our tank compare to what the Soviets would have used if they had to come across, you know, invaded Harder, Europe? Better. They were better? Yeah, because what they had was their American. They were bitty tanks. Okay. And we could out them and everything. Matter of fact, my crew went and fired uh, uh, second highest out of 175 men. Wow. So, and I got a trophy at home to back it up. How many men in your tank? Four or five? Four. Four, uh-huh. 
How about other questions? That, I mean, he saw all the Russians right across the border from him, so he'd see them all the time. Oh, yeah, we watched them. Right now. Yep. What was your main operating base, base there in Germany? Freebird. Freebird, okay. Um, I asked because I was at Hahn Air Base. Hahn? Uh, yep. That's about all the questions I can think of, Mark. Okay. Off the top right. of my head. So, during World War II, the main battle tank of the Germans was the um, King Tiger. That was their top tank. And ours was the Sherman. Um, going into the Korean War, we'd started to, we still used Shermans, but we were starting to get away from them. And they went to a tank called the M48, which eventually became the M60. And that as more improvements were made to the hull, to the turret, to the gun systems. So and this is what Mr. Uh, Mr. Burns used, was the M60 and 65-67. Now, I, put, put, I trained on the M48s at Fort Knox. Okay. And for those tanks, um, the M60 is very effective in the European theater. Yeah. Now, like we had, we'd said earlier, they were using them in Vietnam. Not as effective in Vietnam. They had problems going through the rice paddies. They'd sink. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, point that other tank to the that one over there. That's the that's the King King or that's uh, the Tiger tank. Tell us a little bit about that in World War II. How big that was compared to the Sherman. You look at the comparison of size there. Uh, quite a larger tank than the Sherman tank was. Um, a larger gun than what the Sherman had. Um, a lot of the things with the Tiger was usually one shot from a tank. Tiger tank would take out a Sherman, where it could take several shots from a Sherman to take out a Tiger tank. Mm -hmm. And you look, that's a, probably a relative comparison size, but uh, at least 105. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. Tell us, tell us about what you thought of the military during your time in and what you think kids need to learn about the military today. Well, today they have better equipment than what we actually had. Mm -hmm. And say, for instance, Desert Storm, the tanks that we had, they wouldn't run at Desert Storm because these floors back here, it would get stopped up with, with sand. Yes. And they would suck that sand in there and blow the motor up. And they had problem probably in North Africa with the sand over there with the Sherman tanks over in World War II, I'll bet. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Because any time they got a, a small motor, and then these looks like <coughs> they were gas operating. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Burns is a tank man from 1965 to 67 over in Germany, worked on the M60. So, uh, Mr. Ross is going to ask you a few questions about the tank. This is the man going to ask you well, some stuff. Uh, did you use, did they still use M4 Shermans in no. the 60s? Okay. The M60A1. Speak up, both of you. <clears throat> okay. In the M60s. Okay. So this is the Model T, right. the old version. Oh. Uh, yours were diesel, right? Yeah. Okay. This runs on 100 octane, believe it or don't. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, uh, it was a good tank for that, except they burned a little easier than a diesel. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, we operate this one because we are the wartime museum. Uh, we give rides on this thing. Yeah. But uh, now you worked on them, correct? Yeah. You worked in the crew? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I ask you how those things were to work on. This thing's heavy. Everything on this thing is heavy. Yeah, they are. And the M60 be the same thing? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. What caliber gun? 105 was your Bane gun. 50 caliber was the one from the Cupolo. Okay. So we have a 30 caliber up on the top and a 75 on the front. Okay. So 105 versus uh, okay. 50 versus yeah, 30. 50% larger than the old yeah. right there. Yeah. And then uh, well, we had uh, 7.62. That was zero being right. your main gun. Um, this one had the same thing. It was a 30 caliber. Yeah. Uh, but it was 30 out 6 caliber. But the uh, M60 would have been the 762 NATO, which yeah. had the 308. Slightly right. smaller, but ballistically almost identical. Mm -hmm. And it was co sided with the barrel. Yeah. So that if the tracers from your machine gun were hitting mm -hmm. what you wanted to hit, the main gun would come close. Right. Now, they weren't exactly identical, I don't think. But that was ancient and honorable Kentucky Windy. <laughs> That's how you found it. Well, ours was pretty good because they used to start a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. And we had to have a fire truck sitting on the hand every time we went to fire. 
Okay. Uh, now this one. Uh, Speak up, Mike. Uh, the firing was that from the muzzle flash or from the type of ammo you were shooting? Type of ammo. Okay. You would follow all the way to the target. Okay, tracer. <clears throat> yeah, tra okay. what they call a tracer right now. Yep. Uh, these use tracers also. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Uh, every also, fifth round. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, be every fifth, and the same way as the machine guns on the airplanes. That was a form of aiming. Yeah. Uh, back in this day, in this 1943, mm -hmm. uh, like I said earlier, Kentucky windage. Yeah. There were sights on the gun, but the gun wasn't stabilized. Mm -hmm. uh, what did, was the M60? Did that have a stabilizer for the gun, the firing system? No, but they had. Stabilizer and they uh, zeroed in on the uh, in a minute. It's uh, like a, a side. Right, but as the tank moved, the system, the stabilizer would keep the barrel, the right. gun, aimed at what you were aiming at. Right. Yeah. This one don't have that. Oh, yeah? It's the Mark I calibrated gunner's eyeball. Oh. And he could turn the turret. Yeah. And he could raise and lower the gun. Yeah. But he had to do that in reaction to what he's seen. Yeah. Because the gun didn't know where it was. Now, oh. with, you know, I've seen pictures of the Abrams. Yeah. Where it's running over hills. Right. And it's jumping, basically. Mm -hmm. And the gun don't move. Right. On this old girl, everything moves. <laughs> So if you could hit something moving with your little old M4, basically uh, you're wing shooting. Mm -hmm. you know, you're looking out the sight and flying uh, whatever windage or elevation you think you need. Right. And firing and see where that one goes mm -hmm. and get your loader to load another one. Mm -hmm. Very basic. Mr. Burns, did you have uh, uh, periscopes in yours oh, for the yes. front driver? How well were they? Were they better than these or could you see very well in the periscopes? Point to periscopes well, up, uh, Mike. Point to periscope, yeah. On the driver. Uh -huh. You see one extended up on the very top. Yeah. There's one extended right above the loader, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. gunner position. Yeah. Okay. It's like a mail slot. It's right. about two inches high, mm -hmm. maybe four to five inches wide. Right. That's your view of the world. Right. Now, the ones on the turret could be rotated. Yeah. These are fixed. Mm hmm. But that was your view of the world. Right. So was that the like, same for you and your tank about? Yeah. Not very same. good view. You didn't see everything. Yeah. Well, well, you could see enough. Yes, I see enough. <laughs> yeah. Now, did can you talk about the grousers or the the tracks? Did you ever have to repair that? And tell tell us how easy it was to repair that. Did they break very often on you? Talk oh, yeah. this way. Talk this way. Ours, it was rubber. Uh huh. Instead of being steel. We'd love to have the rubber ones, but we can't find them. Well, uh, whenever you're driving down a freshly blacktop road there in Germany. If you don't have a rubber track, you're in trouble. Because you can you're stack that up the road. Ass, you can stack that asphalt up like that <laughs> if you're gonna make a turn. Yep. Because I've done it. Yeah, when well, we do it, when well, we run this on the turf, mm -hmm. it, as you're turning, the front track and the back of the track are going sideways. Right. And then the back is just pulling the turf up and making a nice pile of it as you mm -hmm. turn. Uh, That's right. People have asked, well, why don't you have this in parades? Well, we could go down your street one time. That's right. <laughs> and then you wouldn't want us to come back. Dude, we go up. Now, we yeah. run it on concrete out here. It does. It leaves marks. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, asphalt, oh, well, well, you can see how deep they are. Okay, now these right here, you take these off. Those two off, yeah. This is just one. And we got a two on the back of the tank that would do that. You can take it off. It's back. It's stored in the back, I That's believe. That's for adjusting yeah. the tension. Adjusting That's tension, not. Tension. Yeah. Uh, to pull the pins out, you got to drive them out. I see. Yeah. That's a little more labor intensive, <laughs> mm -hmm. believe it or not. Well, you can see where they've been banged on, and we used to take a torch, heat it, right, and then take a ten-pound sled, yeah, and look out. Well, then, but that would loosen them up. That knock to, them oh, out. knock them out. Yeah, 10-pound yeah. sled, you yeah. had one of them yeah. with a 250-pound guy swinging it. Yes. He does some damage. <laughs> this this is one track clean right here. This pin, 
yeah. and this pin out, and then this pin and this pin out, and then you can get this piece in your hand should you have to replace it. If right. You break it. I don't know how you break one like that, but should you have to. Yeah, but and then you let the whole track unravel if you had to repair it. Did you do that over there in oh, Germany? Oh yeah, well, I didn't that much snow. Wow. Do you ever go down in the uh, down a hill in the snow, get stuck in the repair tank? Had to help you. Yeah. <laughs> and how they pull up? Is it twice the size of the tank that would pull you out of the oh, ditch? Oh yeah, it's called a BTR vehicle huh. track recovery. So it would pull sixty-seven thousand pounds. Yours is probably eighty thousand or ninety thousand pounds. Uh, it was. Uh, I think it was 65,000 pounds. Uh -huh. yeah. We figured this was a 64. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the nominal weight. Uh, yeah. They got heavier with the various uh, oh, mine sweeping yeah. things, bulldozers yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. This was about 64,000 pounds. The way that we done it in track, whenever you break it loose, it would run that way, <laughs> and you got out of the way. They kill you. Yeah, it would. So in your toolbox, you carry this big rope by that big around. You tie it on this track. You run it over these guides in there to this thing right here. And then the driver in there, he would give it a little bit of gas and cut the wheel whichever way he wants this one here to go, and that one over there would be spinning, but you could make it stay straight. It takes a lot of trouble. And this thing here, it pulls that rope, pulls that track back. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Then after it gets all the way up here, you start taking a, a pair of uh, I used them on the springs on cars. They shape like that. You put them over here, and then you start to ratchet them. And it pulls them together. You put that on it, it will with a hammer. And then you get the other one on, and then you put it back together. How long did it take you to change the track? It might take you about a half a day. Half a day, yeah. yeah. Did they break very often? Do you have to repair no. them very often? No. Only whenever somebody, somebody would run through uh, uh, a soft mud. Yes. And they hit a lime stone. Nice. And it bumps it, you kick track to the okay. inside. Huh. Break through, either like break these. Mm hmm. Bad things for the guys. Sure break it off, and then the track would come off of the vehicle, so you have and to break it. Yeah, to that's what I say. Off. I lost a shovel down there digging, hunting for this track. Oh, it was through it. Yeah, and I was leaning, hold up onto the tank, because the tank wouldn't move. No. So I'm, I'm holding on to it, and I'm down there taking my hand and that little shovel moving it trying to find my, the rest of it. Didn't you have spare parts? No. Yeah, up there. Oh, he's, he's got to find both ends of the track. I see, yeah. At, at some gotta point, you got to get to yes. get both ends. Oh, I see, yeah. Lined up yeah. to get it back on the yeah. track. And then when well, we had that DTR, it uh, come in there, and they had a big winch on the front. So, and and they would hook it up to what on the trunk? Where'd they hook the winch up to? Those little, those down things, that's there. what, that, on both sides and pull the thing right out of there. One right over there. Yeah. Uh, this recovery cable would fit over this hook. Yeah. Either there or there. And, and, and they, they would, would go up to whatever you're towing it with. And they yeah. wouldn't come loose. Rather substantial. That's a one-inch cable. And then both sides. You got two on one each side, yeah. too. You yeah. hook up to whichever side you wanted to pull from. Did you ever do that? Oh, yeah. 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 I've had to pull them with uh, both of them, crisscross. Uh huh. That's for going straight with. Them. Was the winter very tough there? Did you have a lot of problem with the snow over there in Germany? Was <laughs> well, it? That snow was this deep. Wow. Uh, Easter Sunday. Now, did snow give you as much trouble as mud? I don't no. Think you could go through snow easier, right? Yeah. What we done? We take these here center pieces out. Okay. Every fifth one, we take it out. Take a torch, cut it off, put it on the outside, 
and wants it for a chain. And it would take you anywhere you wanted to go. Oh, so you had teeth. Right. This is just flat metal. This, this yeah. is a pig on ice. I've got mm -hmm. Every fifth one you did, turn it over and made a, a, a cleat. It was making a cleat that turned upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of trouble. That would really tear up the German roads. <laughs> <laughs> If you was up in the fields and everything, who cares? Yeah, they don't care. Wow. Now, did you ever have any problem with the, the track? No, not the track, but those wheels there and These like are, look like train wheels in a way. These are at, right there? Yeah. Yeah. These right here would chunk, fly out. Yeah, we've got then, the, then, well, we'd have to put another one on. We've got one. I think it's on the other side. But you can see that bogey right there. We're losing a little bit on the edge. Yeah. They're just hard rubber. Mm -hmm. But they run on the inside of the track. Right. Anything that gets inside the track uh -huh. has to run over. They got to run over it. That's it right. Them up. That's right. And the metal on the side of yours, you're four inches steel on the front, right, Mike? And about two on the side? Two inches here. Two, one two and one. Yeah. Well, now it's two right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. What they call the applique armor, the applique. It's welded off. Fires arm. in the front was 12 inches. 12. Oh where it went like this. Okay, that's on the M60. Uh -huh. yep. And then on the side, it was, I think, uh, I am not mistaken, six inches. Oh, that's a lot but of water. They had a, a bullet that would penetrate that. Wow. Well, wow. it was the one that was this big coming out of the gun, mm -hmm. and then it started tearing up. Then you had okay. this little thing this big. That's the, what they call a sabot round. Right. It would go in there and whatever was inside, you better get out quick. Well, you couldn't get out quick enough. <laughs> no. uh, It'd this, make lens me die. What the penetrator would do, which is what part that was kept flying, mm -hmm. it was pure kinetic energy. It would hit the side of the tank That's and it. so much energy it would basically melt its way through mm -hmm. where the sabot itself and the armor of the tank would be molten metal. And that's what went into the tank, which was very hard on everything inside the tank. You better believe it. And we took them and took one that was already out. Mm -hmm. We took a, a 10 pound sledge. That's all that had around there. Yeah, we've got a sledge back there. I think it's a nine pound, but I don't know. <laughs> They'd have probably upgraded. Yeah. And we took that sledgehammer, hit it. After we, we put this thing in a vise, mm -hmm. and it would dent the bottom of the sledgehammer. Wow. Bend the penetrator? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think this. It don't I bend. Tungsten. I think those are tungsten. Yeah. It's very hard. It could have been, but it don't bend. Yeah. It does and, poke and, holes. <laughs> yeah, off the holes. And then, well, they got another one. We call it the burn stick. Mm -hmm. it, this big little thing this big coming off the end, mm -hmm. and then it had a little cap like that. Mm -hmm. It would hit white fossils. It would oh. hit and just burn a hole right through. Yeah. And then who's ever inside had it. Yeah, wow. And the yeah. driver on the tank, he didn't have a problem with Yeah. Now, did you have problems with your turret when you turn it around and do 360? And could you shoot while you were moving or not? Oh, yeah. Because this one, you Better. shoot, this one, the, the Germans couldn't shoot while they were moving. They had to stop, did they not? Oh, no, they could shoot. It's yeah. just that back in World War II, they didn't have the stabilizing. I see. Yeah. So if your the tank bouncing. is moving, the gun's going where Up and down. Going. I got you. Right. So if you were moving, you had a better chance of missing what you're shooting at. That's now, why they like to stop if they could. What yeah. he was saying earlier, we, his had to stabilize it. Yeah. yeah, that gun was straight. No. We run down through a, uh, say, a cornfield, and it's just like driving on this concrete here. Just okay. it's level and everything. And then we'd run out on a field, fire around, back up, take off, and go to another one, and then swing that turret around. There's a guy got his foot caught in there. The gunner sitting there, and he stuck his foot like that, prop his foot up. On the bottom of the turret basket? And yeah, the gears. Oh, yeah. They like to aid his foot up. Yeah. So when he got we out rides on this one, we locked the turret uh -huh. because there are openings in the turret basket where the, gunner, <laughs> the driver 
and a machine gunner could pass extra ammunition back into the turret in order to resupply the gun. Yeah. And we lock it because if we got somebody in that right front position and he reaches back, gets somebody's attention, and there's an opening in the turret basket. If that turret could move, it could take his arm off. So we lock that from up. So. Questions. So you were stationed in Germany. And where in Germany were you stationed? Freeburg. Freeburg. Okay. Uh, so um, that was during the occupation? Or, no, that was in the 60s. So you were during the Cold War period. Yeah, when Russia was on the other border, they were the Cold War, yeah. You were there for two years, yeah. Uh, so were you, uh, uh, were you guys, was there a lot of in intensity at the time? Was there a lot of, uh, uh, did you feel pressure that the Russians might, uh, or that the East Germans? It was Germans... too cold for them to get out. They yeah. was in Quonson. We was intense. They ain't going to leave that. <laughs> so the war won't happen after October. No, no. That's comforting. And so you're there two years and during a couple winters. Yeah. And you trained over Fort Knox here. Yeah. So that's a pretty big training place for, for tanks, is it not? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Benning's big. Benning and out in California got one training place too, or no? No, I've never been there. Yeah, yeah. But Benning's big. Benning's uh... tank capital. Well, it's pretty big uh, tank stuff. They according. moved the school from Fort, uh, Fort Knox out west. Might have been the day. Yeah. They closed the school. There was yeah. an armor school in uh, Fort Knox. Oh, did they? And they moved it. Mm -hmm. They moved it out west. You know, uh, mm -hmm. They had just acres over there. They'd be out blowing up mm -hmm. training tank crews. Yeah. yeah. But I think they moved it. It could have been the day. Yeah. So the tanks in, in Germany at the time, so did they just patrol the borders or, uh, okay, like the eastern border or the... Pull up there like that and the gun tube is pointing like that and you're out walking in between. Gotcha. You don't get sassy with none of them and none of them pull the gun on you. But you, but you just point like that and you got this 105. <laughs> You ain't gonna pull a pistol on that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it comes over like this. That's right. Is that your point too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to pull a pistol on a, a tank. That's a lot of the war defense. <laughs> yeah. How many other questions? Anything to tell us about it? What should we do with this tank? We're giving rides. Anything else we should do with these guys? Are working their tails off keeping this up? Any ideas on this? Yeah. Like I tell you, on this type, type of the tank, I've never worked on one of them, but the M60, I know one of that thing inside and out. Yeah. We have a volunteer that is retired Army, and uh, his last command, he was in charge of a brigade of M M1 Abrams. Uh -huh. And we asked him, well, do you want to be a driver you know, on this thing? No, that's Jurassic Park. <laughs> I, I'm used to M1 Abrams. <laughs> I know nothing about yeah. uh, which the M1 has a, a bicycle handlebar. Yeah. And it can turn in its own length. Yeah. This one, we could barely turn it around inside this building. Oh, really? We can't stop a track. Both tracks have to keep moving. Oh. It's, kind of, it's like differential on a car. Yeah. It's up here, but you can slow down this track but it has to keep moving. Now that track is free to turn at whatever speed it was, huh. but this one won't stop. Ours will stop being in this track. Yeah, well, that's what he said the Abrams will do also. Yeah. Yours can sit there and pivot in its own right. length, right? You got one track going that way, yeah. one track going this way. Okay. Yeah, we don't have that. He had a 12, uh, you had a Cadillac engine in yours. It was yeah. a 12-cylinder. Cadillac. We got a V8 Ford. Yeah, Even the engine's better. <laughs> it's Cadillac and it's 500 horse. You said and he had 500 gallons of gas. You said, mm -hmm. how many gallons of gas we got in this thing? Well, well when it had all four tanks, I think it was 175. Yeah. We had a great big tank, the full length of the tank on this side, and they come down like that. Mm -hmm. And they had this piece of metal where they both together. Huh. Huh. So as far as somebody trying to steal our fuel and stuff, mm -hmm. they'd be dead. So I tell them. Somebody's <laughs> guarding that fuel, obviously. <laughs> you got that right. Yeah. They're more worried about what they put in the fuel than what they take I out. I was on the guard detail, guarding my dad gun heater. 
Yeah, that's worth more than anything else, wasn't it? Yeah, you better believe it. Thirteen so below you, you zero. You better watch yeah. the other people in your outfit closer than you had to watch the Russians. There you go. <laughs> Any other hey, questions, guys? They couldn't get over to you because of the wire. But the guy in the next barrack <laughs> could. That's right. But whenever he come out, to bust my lock on my heater, on my park there where they can get their arm down for the heater. Well, he was just digging around, filling my heater. I just got him by the arm and pulled him down <laughs> and stuck a 45 in his face. You talking about somebody like me? <laughs> he did. His pupils were about 45 caliber at that point. You right? got that right. <laughs> he offered to buy me anything. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah, your, your life. Okay. Well, well, well yeah. Thank, thanks a lot, Mr. Burns. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Okay, All thank right. you. Okay.